tens of thousands of people will flock to the mid-state and south central Kentucky for the eclipse. And some of them, maybe even you, will be wearing eclipse glasses made right here in Middle Tennessee. News Channel 5's Kristen Scovera went to check out the American Paper Optics. Check it out. So I would say right now from a production standpoint, manufactured, I would say around 60 to 65 million glasses. 65 million glasses. And we're still weeks away from the total solar eclipse. Yep. That is cool. Which means for Tennessee-based manufacturer American Paper Optics, those numbers are only going up. It's always been a lens that we've always had, so we've known about it. And so maybe two years ago, we realized this was going to be the biggest thing that we could ever do. I caught up with the company's CMO, Jason Lewin, who says they're one of just five companies that have been endorsed by NASA. They've got the certifications. They've been doing this for years. They're the ones to buy from, so please do it. American Paper Optics is the largest 3D optics company in the world. We're super busy with all the other stuff that we do because we do all you know, 3D stuff, whether it be 3D for movies, 3D for, you know, books, magazines, TVs, anything you can think of 3D, we're the largest company that does it. It's not just about making money. Lewin says it's a chance to give back, both to nonprofits and educational organizations. We've been working with St. Jude. We've got a partnership with Bill Nye. In Nashville, Kristen Scovira, News Channel 5. Wow, Bill Nye, science nice. guy. Very good. All right, we are continuing now to follow that breaking news. A child dies in an Antioch apartment blaze. Yeah, we're going to have another live update from the scene next on News Channel 5 this morning. Breaking news, we continue to follow this morning. A small child has died after a blaze in an Antioch apartment complex. You're seeing the Sky 5 video of it right there. News Channel 5's Blake Rosnowski has been on the scene all morning long for us. The damage extensive. It's a tragic story, Blake. Yes, yeah, Steve, it is absolutely tragic. We actually did just get an update from the Metro Fire Department uh, commander, and he tells us that the two children who were inside were both under 10. One of them was actually under five years old, and that is the one who unfortunately died in this case. He also tells us that 22 people were displaced as a result of this fire. We do have Red Cross here on scene working to help those families out, and again, we also had a father who received burns on about 80% of his body and one more hurt. We'll continue to stay on scene to get you any updates that we have. For now, live in Antioch, Blake Rosnowski, News Channel 5. What a tough way to start the first day of school for those people who are displaced this morning. This is a look right now. West Nashville looking pretty good. I-40 here at White Bridge Pike. No major slowdowns here. And I-24 westbound lanes here at Bell Road are moving right along this morning. But there is a crash a little bit further down in Rutherford County over on the right shoulder on I-24 westbound. From Murfreesboro, you're looking at a 49-minute ride in to the downtown Nashville area this morning. And school is back. This is a live shot from McGavick High School this morning. Welcome back, students and drivers. Just make sure you're looking out for all those school buses and the students on the road this morning. Those school zones also make sure you slow down. This traffic report brought to you by Jeep. Now let's head over to Leland. Yeah, especially keep an eye on those young ones who are very excited to get back to school and may not be watching as they should. Let's show you what's happening right now. This is the outlook for the commuters this morning. Mid 70s this morning and then 82 for the ride home this afternoon with some scattered showers and thunderstorms. Uh, Williamson County Fair going on. A host of fairs happening. A little bit of a shower chance for tonight. So 83 today, mid 80s tomorrow. Rain chances on the way back up by the end of the week. Right now the time is 6.57. Leland, thank you. That is all of our time this morning. Another full hour coming your way on the plus. Thanks for watching today, everybody. Have a great day and then have a great school day too. Mm -hmm. One child is hurt and three more people are injured and dozens of people displaced after an apartment fire in Antioch earlier this morning. All right, Blake, thank you. A masked man robs a Midtown Sonic restaurant at gunpoint this morning, and we'll have more on who police are looking for just ahead. And it's back to school for students in Metro. Nearly 90,000 students heading back to the classroom. We're live in the Gavick High School coming up next. From your news and information leader, this is News Channel 5 this morning.
Good morning, everybody. Seven o'clock here on the plus. So glad you're with us. I'm Steve Hayslip and I'm I'm Amy Watson. Happy back to school, everybody. I know Metro and other schools are heading back this morning on a rainy mm -hmm. day. Yeah, kids maybe not so thrilled. Parents are ecstatic. I know I am. We go back tomorrow. <laughs> Finally going to get some time to myself. Woo me time, baby. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. All right, let's check that forecast for those kids carrying the umbrella and the new yeah. backpacks uh -huh. today. Although it was great for sleeping last night. It was. Uh, yeah, hard to get up with uh, the rain hitting uh, the, the roof this morning. Right now, let's show you what's happening here in Nashville. We are under a mostly cloudy sky to begin the day. Currently now in the Music City, it is 75 degrees and a wind now southwest at around 5 miles per hour. Our viewpoint now from Gallatin showing 73, but notice now from the Gallatin area, 0.84 in the rain gauge in the overnight hours. So radar, most of you are dry at the moment. The exception is down to our south where there's some heavier Rain sales showing up now from Murfreesboro back into Marshall County and down into Giles County. This activity is in the process now of moving on off toward the east. Temperatures are primarily in the 70s. You got a couple of spots, upper 60s from Hopkinsville back over to Bowling Green. So for today, look for a high this afternoon of 83. Cloud cover keeping temperatures a little lower for us today. And then for tonight, mostly cloudy and a two and ten shot for a shower overnight tonight. We'll talk more about rain chances for today and the week ahead coming up in a few minutes. But right now, Rebecca is here with a check of your five live traffic. Leland, given that it's the first day of school and that we had rain this morning in many of our areas, things are actually looking pretty decent this morning. We haven't had that many crashes. We do have one slight slowdown here. This is I 40 westbound at Central Pike Hermitage area. Let's take a look at those drive times. Not too bad. 17 minutes in from Hermitage, 22 from Mount Juliet and 32 in from Lebanon this morning. Here's I 24 Haywood Lane. You can see those westbound lanes are moving right here, but a little bit further south in Rutherford County, we do have a backup. That's because I 24 westbound inside shoulder crash. This is going to be near Baker Road, and you can see that backup is pushing all the way down to the 840 loop here. Murfreesboro uh, Pike uh, can always be an alternate route for you there. Drive times in on I 24 westbound 13 minutes in from Antioch, 23 from Smyrna, 50 minutes in from Murfreesboro right now. So take a look at this crash map. It's actually not bad at all. We do have one Massman Drive crash that we're watching right now, and down in the Antioch area uh, part of Piccadilly Row is still blocked while the fire crews are out there working on that deadly apartment fire we've been following all morning long, but you can now get by that because they do have at least one lane open on Piccadilly Row once again. Now let's head back to Steve and Amy. Thank you, Rebecca. And speaking of that fire, that breaking news out of Antioch, a child was killed and uh, three others were injured in a fire at an apartment complex. Yeah, New Channel 5's Blake Rosnowski has been on the scene for us all morning long, getting continual updates from firefighters and the fire chief down there. Blake, just a tragic morning. Have they pinpointed the cause on this blaze yet? No, Steve and Amy, unfortunately, they still have not been able to provide us an update on that. They are still down there investigating, trying to figure out what exactly did cause this, cause this fire. However, the fire commander did just provide us with an update saying that you can see that damage there. Um, he did just say, though, unfortunately, two of those children were under 10 years old. One of the child children did die, the younger one being that child. And we did confirm also that the uh, another man suffered burns on about 80 percent of his body and another person was hurt as well at Stone Ridge apartment here off Piccadilly Row. That original call came out around four this morning for an apartment fire with a possible entrapment. They, we do know it originated in the bottom left apartment of building nine. And again, that cause is still unknown. And we're also told about 22 people were displaced as a result of this fire. We do have a Red Cross on scene as well, working to help them out. Again, we'll be staying close with investigators to try to figure out anything else we're able to and provide you with live updates as soon as we are able to do so. Live in Antioch, Blake Rosnowski, News Channel 5. Blake, thank you. And also breaking this morning, police looking for the man who robbed this Sonic at gunpoint. Happened around 3.30 this morning, about three and a half hours ago. It's along Charlotte Avenue, kind of across from where the Red Cross is located. Officers say that a man with his face covered demanded money from the register, and then he took off on foot after grabbing some cash. Luckily, no one was injured. And police now are checking surveillance video, hoping to narrow down 
person they're looking for. Also breaking this morning, Steve, two people are fighting for their lives after an overnight crash. Police say the two men were driving down I-65 near the I-24 split when they lost control and ended up down an embankment. One was taken to Vanderbilt and the other to Skyline, both with life-threatening injuries. Also breaking this morning, Metro Police are investigating a shooting that sent one person to the hospital. It happened last night along Lafayette Street. Investigators say the victim was shot in the right lower leg. Officers say the victim is not cooperating, making it difficult to get a suspect description. Clarksville PD looking for this guy, Tony Bristol. He's accused of shooting two people along Fort Campbell Boulevard yesterday morning. Authorities say one of those people died on the way to the hospital. The other one suffering non-life-threatening injuries. Police say Bristol knew both of the victims. He had left the scene prior to officers showing up. The 30-year-old is considered armed and dangerous. If you see him, contact police immediately. The TBI is investigating a deadly officer-involved shooting in Hickman County that happened over the weekend. Investigators say Kyle Lankford was speeding off from a Dixon police officer who had pulled him over in the stolen SUV. Langford eventually crashed near Buckner Ridge Road in Hickman County. He pulled a knife when the officers tried to arrest him, and that's when the officer shot and killed Langford. Two other people were in that SUV. One's now in custody. The other one took off running and is still out there somewhere on the run. We've talked about it all morning. Be careful when you're on the roads today because the buses are rolling across the mid-state. It is the first day back to school. Yeah, Metro just uh, one of about a dozen districts kicking off this, 